Well, hey guys, welcome back. My name is Mike, and this is Hidden Creek Homestead. everyone's had a very Merry Christmas and uh, Happy New Year. Sorry we haven't been too prolific in getting videos out lately, but you know, with the holidays being here and uh, we have some personal issues going on in the homestead. But we're back at it now. We'll try to get uh, some more regular videos uploaded for you guys. So the plan for today is a couple things I need to get done. Uh, we need to go pick up some feed for our animals. I also want to sanitize our well. Uh, that hasn't been done in a couple months. And I think I have a pretty good system for that. So I'll, I'll take you guys along and show you how we do that. And lastly, um, January 2nd marked the end of our hunting season here. Actually, it was January 1st with January 2nd being a youth day. So I've got a lot of stuff around that needs to get, you know, packed up and put away. We've got our blind out back where we hunt. That's got to get put away. Uh, some stuff within the blind. And we're going to clean out, uh, give our rifles a good cleaning from, from the hunting season. So that's three things we're trying to get done today. Um, get these animals fed and I'll take you guys along and we'll get going on the chores. Hey, pretty lady, sleep all right? Yeah, cool. Hello, Maggie, want a little nibble? Yeah. Hey, Milster, you hiding behind a post? What's up, girl? Hey, sweetheart. All right, so the animals are all fed. We're gonna head on down to the feed store and pick up some feed. Come on, girl. Wanna go bye bye? Come on. Come on, girl. Got my shotgun buddy over here. She likes to take trips with me. No, it's Jenny. Say hello to everybody. All right, you ready? Yeah? <laughs> all right, let's go. picked up uh, some orchard grass hay, which is not what I've been feeding my goats. We've been giving them a, a Timothy and alfalfa blend. Um, just trying something new. They are getting incredibly huge in what we're feeding them, so I think I'm going to try to give them uh, something new and just see how it goes. You know, they're incredibly finicky animals as it is. They might even like it, but, you know, um, we'll try. So we picked up two square bales of, of um, orchard grass hay you can see back there with Miss Virginia um, and, and we'll try it out so um, no guarantees if they'll like it or not but we'll see what happens So the feed that we're using is OMC, which stands for Orangeburg Milling Company, and it's a local feed company that makes their own stuff. I figure it's better to support somebody local that's a small-time business rather than, you know, give my money to one of these mega corporations. So um, that's what we do. It's just a standard pelletized feed. It's 16% uh, protein. You can see I add some um, cracked corn in there. Um, 
also by OMC. I added in there only in the cold months with my chickens only because um, it's it's kind of it's just carbohydrates. It's just calories for them, and um, they don't you know they don't need a whole bunch of it. But in the winter time, it'll get their body temperature up a little bit, and uh, it'll help when on those cold days. So we just add a scoop or two in there with 50 pounds. So we've got all our feed tucked away. But what I did is I took uh, an extra bag of corn. What I do is I take it, I put it right in front. I drive out to uh, where we feed the deer. I just make a little slit in the front and it all pours out in place. So I'm gonna get the dump cart stuck back where it belongs and we'll go feed the deer. How'd you get back here? Let's go, come on. All right, so deer corn is out. SD card and the camera's been changed. Feed's done. Let's take apart our hunting stuff for the season. We're gonna head down to the blind now and get that taken apart. So guys, this is our hunting blind. Uh, I got it at Academy. I think it was an inexpensive pop-up blind. It was like 50 bucks or 49 bucks or something like that. Uh, we camouflaged it in a little bit with some branches and twigs and leaves. It's worked real well for this season. We picked it up the, around, around September of this year and uh, nothing's leaked. We've had no water intrusion and it stayed pretty, uh, pretty steady through storms. What I'd like to do is this back area right here is I'd like to um, build the box blind that's elevated a little bit maybe four or five feet off the ground, um, six by eight structure that's up here. Make it out of wood so it's a little more permanent, a little more sturdy, and um, it'll be more comfortable as it is right now. You know, I bring the kids out hunting with me or whatever, and we sit in there and it's kind of tight, and they're just kind of uncomfortable, and it's just not really well suited to have multiple people in there hunting. So we're gonna build a box blind so we can be more comfortable. And uh, like I said, we'll make it out of wood, put a tin roof on it, and I think on the back side, we're going to build a little bit of a porch and some stairs coming down because I don't usually enter from this way. This is the way we shoot. We usually enter from the back. I'll get you turned around here. So right here in this spot, we'll get it built. And as you can see, we've got a nice clear lane that looks all the way down that way. Once we have a blind built and elevated, we'll probably have to there's a fallen tree right here. We'll we'll get rid of that so that we don't have any interference up top. But for now, I'm gonna get all these sticks and brush out of here and we'll fold up our blind and get it packed up for the season. So we've had our, our chair in here. We have a shooting tripod set up. 
a bucket upside down, which kind of serves as a little bit of a table for us. And we have a small folding chair in here for when my kids come in. Next step is to go ahead and get all the stuff out of here so we can get the blind unstaked and fold it up. So there's everything out. Now that I think about it, I kind of did a boneheaded thing by putting that dump cart away first. I could have put all the stuff in there and then towed it back. All right, well, that's not the prettiest solution, but where there's a will, there's a way. And I got a way, and that'll work. All right, I know what you're thinking. Why does he save the title of the video for the very end? There's a good reason for that. You're probably like, yeah, 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 this guy's just trying to get YouTube views by saving it for last. Not that that's a bad YouTube tactic, but there's a reason for this. Let me show you. All right, so the reason why this is at the end of the video instead of the beginning is because I like to sanitize the well towards the end of the day. All right, um, we're gonna use a regular bleach, just a household bleach. Make sure you use a non-scented bleach or anything like that, with no additives, just a regular plain bleach. I use about a half gallon, and we're gonna pour it in our well, and I like it to sit in there for a little while. You know, it should be a minimum of a half hour to even up to a day. So the first thing we're gonna do is gonna get our bleach in the well. Um, I have a funnel that I leave out here in the wellhead. It fits perfectly for our spout, and it's just ready to go when we come out. So usually you'll find a little pipe or an opening. This is your wellhead and the pipe that goes out to the house. This is your electrical connection for your pump. So um, we have this little nipple here, this pipe nipple, and this funnel fits perfectly into it. So I just kind of leave it out here specifically for that purpose. So it goes without saying, when you put this stuff in, take your time, go slow, pour it in nice and easy because, you know, a tiny little speck pops up, gets on your expensive shirt, you got a bleach spot. So just be careful and pour it slow. All right, so so far all we had to do was pour bleach in a hole. Yeah, I think you guys can handle that. All right, so we're gonna let that sit. Tonight, I'm gonna let that sit for about an hour, do its thing. We sanitized the well about three months ago, so we shouldn't even let it sit for too long. Next thing we wanna do is go inside and open up one faucet at a time, your bathroom faucet, your kitchen faucet, other bathrooms, maybe you have a laundry sink in the basement, something like that. Open up one at a time, just until you smell bleach, then turn it off. Step number three, and this is an important one. Assuming you guys have septic systems, I don't know, maybe some of you could have a well and be on the sewer, I'm not sure, but it's unlikely, usually you're gonna have a septic system. After you've opened all your faucets inside until you smell bleach and then turn them off, you let that sit for a while as well so they can sanitize the water that are in your lines inside the house. The third part here that we're going to do is you want to come out to your hose after the amount of time that you've you know, been specified to have the bleach sit in your well. Come out to your outdoor hose and turn that on and let it run into the soil for a little while until you no longer smell bleach in that as well. The reason for that is if you just go ahead and recirculate it through your house, like turn on your kitchen faucet, let's just say, and let it run until you don't smell bleach anymore. If you have a septic system, you're going to have to dump all that bleach or whatever residual bleach is left in that well into your septic tank, and you can wind up killing off all that beneficial bacteria that's in there. I know it's kind of a gross topic that no one likes to talk about, but seriously, you, you really don't want to pour bleach into your septic system because septic system is not going to do what it's supposed to do if you pour bleach in there. So very important. If you have a septic system, Run your hose after as your last step to sanitizing your well to get 
all that residual bleach that's left in there out. Well, guys, I hope this helped you um, sanitize your well if you've been having issues with it. I know it's like a really incredibly super, super easy project. Um, anyone can do this, uh, including me, the city boy who came out here and I was like, well, how do I sanitize a well? I figured it out. It's super, super simple. Um, if I can do it, you can do it. So um, hope this helped you guys. Um, thanks for tuning in. I'll try to get some more videos going for you guys. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This is not the only way to do this, guys. Um, if you have a better way or if you think I'm doing something wrong, I don't get offended. Leave it in the comments. I love to learn. So let me know. Leave it in the comments below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks and be well.